When I was a kid, it wasn't even type one and type two. It was like mm. adult onset diabetes yeah. and juvenile That's diabetes, right? right. right? And I didn't know anybody that had what we now commonly refer to as type two, but we're in a situation at the moment where I think the statistics are something, I mean, you would know much better than me, but we're verging on like 30% of Americans being, of adult Americans being diabetic or pre-diabetic. Right. And, and the childhood rates are insane as well. I mean, where are we at the moment? Yeah, okay. So the statistics say by 2030, that one in three people in the United States will be living with some form of diabetes. It's insane. Okay, let's do the math on that. How many people well, in the United States? Well, I mean, States? we already have one third with pre diabetes. It's 85 million people just don't know it. Correct, correct. So, so what the statistics are saying is that by 2030, so let's fast forward 10 years from now, there's gonna be a massive diabetes problem with one out of every three people walking around saying, I have diabetes, I have type two diabetes mainly, right? But what Robbie is saying, which is absolutely right, which is that today, in 2020, there are 30 million people approximately in the United States that have been diagnosed with some form of diabetes. So about th one to three million of those have type one, and then the other 27 to 33 million have type two. In addition to those people, there are now 85 million other people who are living with prediabetes but don't even know it, mm, yeah. right? So the total number is somewhere about 110 million people who are living with some form of blood glucose instability, blood glucose variation problem, and majority of them don't even know it. And those are the people that over the course of the next 10 years are gonna likely progress to type two diabetes causing a huge, you know, an even larger epidemic than we're facing now. And the cause is standard American diet and not enough exercise and living stressful lives, essentially. Excess calories, excess saturated fat, in the diet, not enough exercise, high stress, no questions. Mm -hmm. And the solution. With the diet being the biggest problem of all yeah. of them. Yes, exactly right. Yeah. Um, all right, well, let's talk about the solution. So um, we, already kind of, we already kind of, you know, waded into it a little bit here, um, but you guys are coaching people, you've got this book, Mastering Diabetes, and it's essentially, you've created this protocol to say, look, we're N of two, but, here's what the research says, here's what the science says, mm -hmm. um, here's how we can hold your hand and walk you through this process and get you from your type two diabetic state or your pre-diabetic state and walk it back. Exactly yeah, right. at NF2 and also 3000 plus people who've been through our coaching right. program. Uh -huh. And like you said, a lot of research, there's over 800 plus citations in that book. And the research goes back. It goes back all the way to the 1920s showcasing that the more carbohydrate food you eat, the lower your insulin resistance goes. So, I mean, insulin was first discovered in 1921, then it was first used in humans in 1922. So that around this time, that's when the whole conversation starts to emerge about, okay, insulin sensitivity. So 1926, Dr. Sansom publishes a paper in the Journal of the American Medical Association called The Use of High Carbohydrate Diets in Treating Diabetes. And this is the first time, he said, I used a radical experiment in 150 patients, adding bread, potatoes, fruit, and low-fat milk, all right? That's what he adds. And he finds that his patients don't need to use more insulin. So prior to the discovery of insulin, they were fed a very, very low-carbohydrate diet, very high in fat, very high in protein, just to keep people alive. So that's what was going on. They were having like 400 calories a day. It was miserable. Nobody liked the food. They couldn't think clearly. They had no energy. So Dr. Sansom feeds them this higher carbohydrate diet, and all of a sudden, they return to physical activity. They return to their normal mental capacity. The diet actually tastes good. And this is just the beginning. Then in the 1930s, Dr. Rabinowitz in Canada starts practicing a higher carbohydrate diet with his patients, publishes several papers, in 1935, he publishes a paper, which is a five-year randomized controlled trial in 100 people. 50 people try the old low-carbohydrate diet, 50 people try the new higher-carbohydrate diet, okay? He sees a 1% reduction in insulin use on the old diet and a 57% reduction in insulin use on the higher-carbohydrate diet. Whoa. Okay? I mean, he actually, I actually brought a few statements here to read. He concludes... Carbohydrates increase, whereas fats decrease the sensitivity of the individual, animal, and man to insulin. This is 1935. Just researchers clearly stating fat consumption impairs insulin sensitivity. 
Then at the same time, you have Dr. Hemsworth in the United Kingdom. He's publishing very fancy studies in people who do not have diabetes. So he wants to test in normal human subjects what's going on with insulin use depending on what type of diet I feed them. So he gets a bunch of healthy young male medical students. He feeds them seven different diets for the minimum of seven days. All right, the high fat diets, 80% of calories coming from fat. Low fat diet is 16% of calories coming from fat. Okay, and he sees there's a stepwise improvement in insulin sensitivity as he decreases the fat in the diet. You got seven different diets over seven different, this very, very thorough experiment. He concludes that study saying, the greater the amount of carbohydrate in the diet, the greater the sensitivity of the organism to insulin. Again, this is 1935, wow. people are saying this. And then you skip to like the work of Walter Kempner, 1958, you remember his work? I mean, Refresh fruit me juice, memory, no. okay, he's feeding people white rice, uh -huh. fruit juice, fruit, and white sugar. This is a diet of less than 5% of calories come from fat, a very highly processed. It was originally designed to treat hypertension, okay? So he publishes a paper. He's like, he got great results. He was reversing heart disease, kidney disease, all kinds of stuff. He was even skeptical. What's going to happen if I feed this diet to people living with diabetes? So he publishes a paper on 100 consecutive patients, no cherry picking, and they're eating all these processed foods. Their fasting blood glucose drops. Their insulin levels drop their cholesterol drops, and their weight drops, eating processed, high-carbohydrate-rich foods. And what's amazing and what, is that the four foods ahead. that he fed people, mm -hmm. fruit, fruit juice, white rice, white table sugar. These are mm -hmm. literally four of the foods, or food groups, I would say, that modern diabetes well, everybody wisdom- everybody tell you to uh, avoid all of those. I mean, yeah. we vilified fruit, but you know the other ones seem a little, even more like, yeah, of course you're not supposed to do that. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I mean, has anybody ever studied what would happen if you put a diabetic on like, just they just drink Coca-Cola and eat candy, like just like pure table sugar okay. or high fructose corn I'm gonna syrup. answer that question like, right now. No fruit, Listen. no fiber, just yeah. shh, like. I can't believe you just asked that question. You just yeah. lined it up as if we talked to him beforehand. <laughs> 1971, Dr. Brunzel publishes a paper in the New England Journal of Medicine. He feeds people a sugar water diet, literally dextrose and a little bit of protein powder. 85% of calories coming from carbohydrate, 15% from protein, 0% from fat because it's a processed diet. When you eat a whole food diet, you can't eat 0% fat. There's fat in lettuce, there's fat in bananas, mm -hmm. there's fat in apples, there's fat in everything you eat. If you just eat enough whole foods, you're going to get like six, seven, eight percent of calories coming from fat. So he feeds people this highly processed diet. So he had them on a control diet. There were 22 subjects. 13 of them had prediabetes. The rest did not have diabetes. Okay. Puts them on a control diet for seven to 10 days. And then he feeds them the sugar water diet. Their fasting blood glucose levels drop. 8% in the non-diabetics, 9.6% in the people having the prediabetes. But more importantly, he does a paired oral glucose tolerance test. So this is where subjects are given a glucose challenge, like 75 grams of carbohydrate and like a liquid solution. And they're gonna measure the blood glucose levels at every 30 minutes and insulin levels every 30 minutes for the next two to three hours. And he finds that on this sugar water diet, the blood glucose values went down and their insulin levels went down. So they're eating liquid sugar water requiring less insulin with low so new england what would happen if you so how come you're not just like eating candy so, all the time well i mean we this, do, but. <laughs> <laughs> that what well, the point is is because it's this is just the biology of what's happening uh -huh. but as far as long-term health overall health you know your gut microbiome of course you want to have nutrient dense foods that also happen to be low in fat right okay but there's still one there's a couple more studies that i think are worth noting but 1979 yeah. Tell them about this. 1979. This mind blowing. James W. Anderson, he conducts a study at the University of Kentucky with Kylene Ward. They take 20 subjects who are all living with type 2 diabetes for a minimum of two years. He puts them on a control diet, you know, the standard diet. I think it was like 40% of calories from fat or so. And then they put them on a weight maintaining high carbohydrate diet. So this is not weight loss can be attributed to any success here. And in 16 days, 50% of the subjects require zero insulin. So these are individuals that have been using insulin for two years. Yes, they all had high fasting blood glucose levels. They were straight up type two diabetics. And then he just switches them to a diet they had, and he forces them to eat enough food so they don't lose a single pound. And within 16 days, call it two weeks, 
they're off insulin altogether. And what were they eating specifically? It was a lot of starch, high carbohydrate starch. Potatoes, foods. rice, things like that. Bread, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Wow. Percent of calories was 9% of calories coming from fat on that diet. Mm. So the, as we go into the biochemistry, which I know we're gonna have Cyrus talk about, you'll understand why the low fat component is so important.